Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender an app. And this week, we do have a couple of cool things that you would want to take a look at. Of course, we're going to go ahead and talk about Cycles X and also the whole roadmap thing. But before we get right into it, let's take a look at some of the updates and some of the things that you will be getting right now. So if you download Blender 2.93, there are a couple of updates that are also coming to it of course these are not potentially new features they just updates and some of them include the switching functionality for the sculpt mode you'd also be getting some geometry add domain and for most part if you're working with the spreadsheet there's also a couple of updates to that and of course we did talk about something that the folks at blender foundation removed and that was the button for you to lock your camera in view this one is something that we will probably not be seeing in blender 2.93 and uh, a lot of people have been asking why has this been removed and there's a blog here that actually talks about why it was removed of course you would notice that there's a whole lot of heartbroken you know tokens been given out there is just one thing the only reason why this was actually removed was objections were raised now if you'd like to read more about this one i'm going to put a link in the description where you can check it out and you might also want to see some of the things that are within the to do's things that will be transferred current status of certain things and also lots of stuff that deals with the future release for blender 2.93 so i'm also going to put links to this in the description so just in case you know just in case you're excited about this one you can check it out now while we talk about this the sculpt expand has also gotten a new operator and this is also something that pablo has been working on and you can also see a newsletter that actually talks about the fact that blender 2.93 has now entered its beta so we've covered a couple of things about this one and we've also talked about 3.0 and with that said let's dive back into blender 3.0 and talk about some things that you need to see so with blender 3.0 open right here the alpha you would notice that we still have everything the same way they are there's literally little to no update that made it to this week and we're just going to talk about some of the cool things that we have so one of them is this, that if you go over to your geometry node, oh, by the way, if you would like to switch to your geometry node, you don't want to do it that way, there is a geometry node section. I kind of always miss doing that all the time. So you can now switch tabs to the geometry node. And from here, you can do some lovely stuff. So let's simply get started with this. And what I would like to show you guys is something that is pretty simple. It looks new, it looks clean, and it will change the way you work. So let's get a simple sphere, I would get a UV sphere, click and drop that right here. And with that done, let's go through and now search for a switch node. So right now we have a switch node, very similar to what you already have in Houdini, but this is uh, lovely. So what do we have going on here? Now with the switch node, there is actually a couple of input types that you can select. Right here we have the float integer boolean. These are basic input types that deals with, you know, your data types that you can work with. And at this point, we would like to get a geometry. Now with the geometry selected, we can plug the first one, we can plug the second one, and then we can now connect this to the output and do some switching. So at this point, you kind of feel like, okay, uh, this uh, doesn't really mean so much. Of course it does. Right here, you can connect something totally different that you can use to drive the switch node to get some very interesting result. And if we actually go in and open up a scene which we set up earlier, you would notice that with a switch node, we can do some very interesting stuff. So this is a very basic scene that was just done all right here. The only thing that was created in the viewport is this Susan head right here that was scattered around this particular surface. So this switch node will also come in very handy, especially when you want to create things like bullying cuts and you would like to switch in between these bullying cuts, you know, to make some suggestions, to make some changes. You know, if you're not so head bent on what you actually want or you don't have a proper decision of what you want, this might come in very handy. So from this point, we can switch and you can see we have a couple of variations. And with these variations, so I think we are working with this one. So and with these variations, you can do some stuff like this. Everything that we have here is being driven by the Boolean. So you can see that here and we can also switch back and you can see with this, we can also get some very you know interesting result and with the boolean as well if we go over to sections like this we can make some super internal cuts and uh, we can also cut this all through and you can also notice that you're having some very lovely time while creating things like these things so you can use this entire thing and drive some crazy crazy stuff and for those who might be wondering what is this this is just a simple cube and this cube 
you know has a bounding box and from the bounding box we're driving the maximum to the rotation and the minimum to the scale and with that we are getting some very cool stuff so the geometry node is coming a very wonderful way and uh, by the way for those who might be thinking you know this might look cool for animation yes you can you can actually animate this stuff and uh, animate these parameters and get some good results with them now with that said let's talk about the cream on top so the cream on top right now is something that we've already talked about you know we've, we've looked at it we did say that it is going to change the way a lot of things work and that is cycles x cycles x is now available and you can get it you can literally download it now and you can test it out so i did download it i tested it out it's super cool really really nice and of course it is going to work perfectly fine if you have a good gpu okay if you have a good gpu you would have fun working with this and where can you get it if you go over to the branches right now scroll all the way down you would notice that we have this here so i'm actually going to pump that up here and i think that should be this so let's check about and see so this is cycles x and let's also see with our default you know a version of blender master which is a 3.0 alpha let's see what we have so i'm just going to go ahead and load up the bmw the almighty bmw scene go over to edit go to preference make sure we're using optics maybe we should just turn this one on for good measures and simply save that preference and we'll also do the same thing for this other one let's grab that bad boy bmw scene and get that right here let's also make sure that we have everything set properly all right let's also click and say okay so with this now we might also set this to experimental so i guess this might be experimental and once you click on this particular button of course you can see what we have we have this sort of sampling speed going on and this is because we're using the simple alpha and uh we have this thing set to gpu rendering is done the bmw scene by default is very fast so that's not a problem so we can also get this one going and of course you can notice how fast this is actually running and uh, we'll also get a good result with this one and for sure in all fairness the cycles x is definitely going to give you better performances and you know better boost when working with this but i kind of think that maybe we should try out with something even more crazy so we'll just get the monster bed scene and also do the same thing right here let's grab that scene as well and um let's see what we can get all right and with both versions of blender having exactly the same scene loaded up what do we have here let's actually go over to the edit go over to the preference and make sure that we have everything right there do the same thing right here so we're just going to be running optics at this point and let's see what version do we have here let's go about this is the master and let's also confirm that right here what do we have here we have cycles x so for this one let's take a look at what the gpu would look like so i would you know give this one a head start by simply going over to the 3.0 alpha press z on the keyboard switch over to rendered and let's see how long it takes so i'm just going to press the playback and see what we get so let's see okay that looks good all right so that looks good and uh i guess that's going to be the, exactly the same thing with this one so let's also move this over to the section press that button press the playback and see what we get let's also give it some time and yes you can see this now by default once you take a look at these things of course you probably wouldn't notice a massive difference now the difference actually starts playing in or you know it starts coming in when you proceed to rendering so to actually get the most out of this or, you know, do a very good comparison with these things, I think it's just best to hit the render button and render this image. So instead of going in and tweaking this, we're just going to get a simple render. The, both of them have the GPU compute. And of course, we also have this one set to GPU compute with the supported feature. And we have all of them running exactly the same thing. And because we're using optics, I'm just going to set this one to optics and also set this one to optics as well. So if we go over to render and hit the render image, let's see what we get. And let's give this one some time. And of course you can see that this render is done. And with Blender 3.0, the alpha, the master build, we are getting this particular image at three minutes and 48 seconds. So let's see what Cycles X is gonna do. Let's just confirm that one more time. All right, so let's see what Cycles X is gonna do. We would go over to render and hit render image just for comparison sake. And right here you can see that with cycles x we're getting half the render time and when i mean half the render time it is literally way more than half because 
you know you can see this ends at 1 minute and 19 seconds while this is at 3 minutes and 48 seconds so would i you know subscribe to you getting the cycles x yes of course get it test it play with it and you know help give out some bug report now something else which you guys need to also keep in mind is with this here the folks at blender has also made it clear that certain things are not running at this point so at this point you'll probably not be getting good volumetric rendering in terms of speed and performances and for things like shadow catcher and multi-device rendering they are also looking at ways to optimize these things and even make it better and we've already covered a video about this one so just in case you want to read up on this maybe you want to see it link to this is also going to be in the description so you can check it out now with that said let's also talk about the roadmap so there is a roadmap that is going on right now and uh, this roadmap deals with the planning a couple of projects that we will be seeing cycles development is already here and of course we also know that lts is also going to be coming now we've also seen some very cool stuff coming to the grease pencil and at the same time we've also seen some geometry nodes and we are also seeing that the usd importer seems to be something that the folks at blender foundation are currently working on with the folks at nvidia and they are trying to make it even better so these are some of the projects that will be going on within 2021 so in case you want to read up on the roadmap as well link to this is also going to be in the description and while we talk about things that you might want to read up if you go over to the blender cloud right now you might also find this very interesting read that deals with scene performance on sprite fright now this is a very interesting read especially for those who are into animation and maybe you are also invested into the sprite fright you might want to see how the viewport playback performances have been improved while creating this beautiful animation short now with this said let's talk about some community stuff some free stuff that you guys will be getting for the weekend for the week something that you guys can now use for your projects for free and also some you know premium stuff that you can now get so julio silhouette 3d art is giving out the material pack paper one he's also giving out the material pack console and also fabric and all of these things are here so you might want to grab them and uh, these are very free stuff that you can get and you can check out all the free stuff that he has here so in case you're looking for you know you're looking for materials you're looking for stuff that you can work with these are very very nice ones that you can actually grab so these are pretty nice i might also do a very simple shout out about this one sometime so you might grab these ones and you can start working with them and while we talk about things you can grab there's also some very interesting stuff that the folks at Fee Digitalism are giving out for free. You can get the Muffle, you can get the Paleta, you can also get separate Meta Balls. This is an add-on and of course there is also this beautiful add-on. So I'm actually thinking about doing, you know, a review for this one. I've already purchased it so I'll probably do a review for this one so that you guys can see. And this is very, very nice. So just in case you want to project things onto your model, you can grab this and you can start working with it. This is a very, very cool add-on that you need to get so i'm also going to put a link to that in the description so you can check it out meanwhile there is also some awesome looking pipe kits that you can get so all of these are sort of modular pipe kits that you can work with what you can do with this is simply awesome so just in case you're thinking about creating pipes you know industrial pipe looking stuff yes you can you can use this and uh it does come with procedural materials as well so just in case you're also looking at ways to add things like rust and all that stuff when creating industrial pipings like this you will find this one very very interesting and this creator also has uh some other things going on here which you might want to check out so you can see that he has you know the spaceship engine with procedural exhaust this looks cool so these are also some of the nice things that he does but if you want to get free stuff this is also a very free one that is available that you can grab and speaking about things that you can grab there is also this beautiful add-on that i just met so i'll probably purchase this one and also share it with you guys this is a curve basher for blender and what this does is it simply creates curves all right so it creates a couple of curves that you can work with and i think i think this is very very nice i haven't given it a try i might probably get it give it a try do a review so you guys can see what it looks like and this reminds me of the cable rator cable rator is also a very good you know cable stuff so in case you're looking for cable stuff you know you want to get these things these are also very nice so the pipe stuff is here for free and uh if you're looking for cable things then you can consider checking these ones out and by the way the folks at blender foundation are also still looking for a 3d generalist now if you're into you know working with blender you have an extensive experience 
yes, you can apply for this. And you need to have an experience about five years plus while working with Blender. And you need to also make sure that you fit into all of these criteria. Having an advanced knowledge of Blender, Cycles and EV would definitely come in handy. You might also want to take a look at some other criteria that you probably need to fit in. So this is more like it and uh, I would like to know what you guys think about it in the comment section. And yeah, before we go, I did see this and I think since it's free, it's open source and it's available, you guys may want to check this one out. I'll probably do a video about this one that talks about Allusion. It is a tool for those who are into referencing, you want to store your references. This is a wonderful tool that you might probably, you know, you might probably want to keep. And this is very, very nice. Huge shout out to the creators saw these on the internet you know felt i should share it with you guys it's available for windows linux and also mac and uh it's looking really really awesome lots of stuff we've talked about today tell me what you think about them in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with your tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday Tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.